So do you, if someone was watching that and said, how can I be saved? That's what you would tell oh, them. Oh, I would is. say yes. Go. What about repentance? What does that mean? Well, I think, it, I think that's involved. I don't think you can ask Jesus to come in without repenting for a very simple reason. Hey, explain repentance. What does that word mean in this? It sounds archaic. To well, it. first of all, the word literally trans translates taking a new direction. Turning around. Turning around. A yeah. 180. Turning around. It's a 180 degree turn, going in another direction. But it's also recognizing that the direction that you were heading was a bad direction and was going to lead to destruction. So it's a turning around. I, I believe that repentance goes with Christ. You know what? I think falling let, in love with yeah, him let, makes let, you let, just let, let me put it this way. Right. Let me give you a story. When so I was in high school, woo. when I was in high school, I was showing some stomach. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there, were, there, were, there were women all over. The oh, world. Lord. They're falling they, in love with that Oh, stomach. yeah, right. Okay. And, and the thing is, if they see my stomach, they'll be clicking the channel. Yeah, there we go. Uh, when I was in high school, uh, uh, there was this girl I was going to take out on a date, my first date. In those days, we didn't have cars. And I lived in the inner city. Nobody had a car anyway. I'm on my way to the girl's house. 7 o'clock, I'm supposed to pick her up. It's a quarter to 7. I'm walking down the street. I come to the corner, waiting for the traffic light to train. A car goes by and splashes this gook up on me. I looked at my clothes and I said, boy, that looks pretty bad. <laughs> Should I go back and change? I thought, no, I'm late. It's not so bad. I continued to walk a little further. And when I came under a street lamp, I saw that, gee, it was a lot worse than I thought. But it still wasn't so bad that I should turn back. I got to the house. I knocked on the door. She opened the door and I stepped into the full light. Mm. And I was filthy. Why do I tell that story? I want to know, did she go out with you? Yes, she did. Yeah. But never again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but here's the story. When you're in darkness, you don't even notice the sin in your life. When you're right. in spiritual darkness. The closer you get to the light, i.e. to Christ, mm -hmm. the more you are aware of the sin in your life. Right. When you come into the fullness of his presence, then you realize just how much sin there is in your life. This is why Paul, saintly Paul, Paul who lived such a righteous life, mm -hmm. ultimately would say things like, I am the chief of sinners. Right. I am worse than everybody else. Not because he was worse, but because he saw himself in the full light of Christ. Okay. And all I'm saying well, is, when saved. you come into the presence of Christ, you become Aware of the dark side of your humanity. But are you ready for this? Wait, Aren't you ready? Are you going to ever let me talk? No. Okay. He not only forgives you, but he cleanses you and forgets that you ever sinned in the first place. I know. And that's why you feel good about yourself. Well, I do feel good about myself. I do like me, finally, after yes. 48 years. It took you years. a long time. It took a long time. No one has ever spoken as evilly to me as I... Evilly? Is that the word? No one has ever spoken as poorly to me as I've spoken to myself. Yeah. I mean, I've looked at myself in the mirror and called myself everything but a white man. Yeah. Okay, the, my point was, though, when I am in the presence of God, which usually happens for me in the shower, because that's when I'm alone, really alone. That's your closet. That's my closet. Yeah. And it never happens for me on a Gaither video or in public usually because I've been on stage so much that I can start to move to that place and I immediately become aware of there's cameras everywhere yeah. and should I wipe the tear or let it stream and it becomes such, it becomes it, and it's so repulsive to me to think like that yeah. that that is so wrong that I don't let myself go there but in the shower I have boohooed cried snotted bawled shouted nearly spoken in tongues but listen I've never felt condemned in his presence yeah I have never felt ashamed in his presence. Well, I, here it is. I have felt ashamed and condemned by his people, yeah. but I have never felt ashamed or condemned in his presence. He doesn't condemn. But the more you come close to Jesus, the more you are aware of the things in your life that have to be changed, the more you are aware. But it's not a shameful thing. I never felt, I mean, like, like I understand conviction. Well, I... But it doesn't, I don't, I mean... I'll tell you this, First John, feel the first chapter, when I come to Jesus, here's what it says, if you confess your sins, he will forgive you of your sins 
and then the next part of the verse is, and he cleanse. will cleanse you. Now, once you're cleansed, it's over. Right. It's done. Right. But I have to come for cleansing every day. Every day at the end of the day. Every day. Is every there always day, a sin he points out Every to you? day. Yeah. Let me really? Just, yeah. Let me give you this. Every day. Yeah. You, you're, you've done something you've got to confess. Here's what, I, here's what you need to do. Let me say this. I must know. If, for the Roman Catholics that are watching this show, okay. there's a Roman Catholic saint called Saint Ignatius. Started the Jesuits. Mm -hmm. In his writings, the spiritual exercises, he has a section in there called the Prayer of Examine. And this is what he says you should do. At the end of every day, as you go to bed, the last thing you should do is to remember everything you said and did during the day. How can you? Go back. What, who did I, I woke up in the morning. I went to breakfast. How did, how did I talk to my wife? How did I talk to my children? I went to class. How did I treat my students? That obnoxious students that seem to be picking on me. How did I react to him? Uh, how did I Driving. behave in the lunchroom? See, so I go through a whole day, and, and as so far as I can remember, and may I believe that the Holy Spirit is there. Driving, that's yeah. I guess. That you the just Holy want to thank Lord, please forgive me for the Holy Spirit. Driving. The Holy Spirit will help you to remember. And here's the thing that you should do. First of all, remember all the good things you did. She did a lot of good things today. Yeah. And thank God for the, for the grace and the ability to do the good yes, that you did. Yes. Then go over all the things that you should not have done and say, God, cleanse me, forgive me, and wipe the memory of these things from my mind. Examine yourself. The Apostle Paul says when you take Holy Communion, you shouldn't eat the bread or drink the cup unless you first do what? Exactly. Examine yourself. Self-examination, looking at the good and thanking God for the good. Sometimes people look at themselves and all they ever see are the dark things. Oh, I'm such a sinner, I'm no good, I'm no, so rotten. Yeah. I remember when I was a pastor of this little church and I wanted this guy to teach Sunday school and he said, Oh, Pastor, I would love to teach that class of junior boys, but I'm so sinful. I'm so sinful. And I said, I know. If I had anybody better, do you think I'd ask you? <laughs> <laughs> I just had to put them down. Because if all you're going to do is look at the ugly side right. of your humanity, you'll end up immobilized. There's good that God has done in the course of your day. Glorify God for the good that he was yes. able to do through you and then acknowledge the things that went wrong and ask him for forgiveness for cleansing and for the impetus to make sure you do better the next day every day should end as Ignatius says with a prayer of example